Action News on KGDY. I'm Kelly Sunbeam. And I'm Dirk Hardthrottle. In today's top story, the Supreme Court sided with the White House today and ruled that the constant scanning of our nation's capital for mind control rays was unconstitutional and should be stopped immediately. In other news, James Jeffers, the former evil mad scientist, turned good mad scientist, turned global shipping magnate, turned president of these United States, has announced that he is signing an executive order increasing his term from four years to 40 years. A few legal experts suggested to the president that he would require an act of Congress to bring about such a change. The president acknowledged that he would and asked Congress to pass that legislation, which they then did unanimously. Since at least one of these votes was cast by the current chairman of the controversial Term Limits Now party, some people in Washington are calling shenanigans. Captain Shenanigans, of course, is immune to mind control owing to his alien brainwaves. When asked about Captain Shenanigans, President Jeffers responded that he welcomed that investigation and that Captain Shenanigans would be in for a sweet surprise if he showed up anywhere near the White House. Well, with an incentive like that, I'm sure we'll be hearing from the captain real soon. And now, something very special. As many of you know, before Thanksgiving, we had planned to share an expose about the rising prices of turkey meat and the environmental impact of the poultry industry. It had to be postponed due to the attack of the Space Pilgrims of Rigel 7, and then again near Christmas because of the atomic reindeer crisis. Now, while we know that the holidays are long past, I've convinced the station management that there is still some value to be had from this report. So we now present to you... Hold on a minute, Dirk. Something just came across our desk. Of course. We're getting reports that a giant robot has appeared in downtown Metrodelphia. The robot is described as human-shaped, with an eerily grinning design on its face, and huge grasping claws where the hands should be. Six high-rise buildings have already been severely damaged, as this monstrous construct makes its way to the center of town. And so, for the 17th time, we will postpone our series on turkey prices to bring you live coverage of this latest crisis. We now take you to Sally Simpson, who's on the scene. Hi, Kelly. I'm estimating the robot to stand at least seven stories tall, which makes it relatively small in comparison to some of the other giant robots we've seen in the past. But this one seems particularly well-suited to causing considerable structural damage. I actually watched it just a moment ago walking straight through a ten-story building. Has anyone claimed responsibility or made any kind of demands for what it would take to stop this wanton destruction? Well, it's interesting you say that. I talked to some witnesses who lived in one of the buildings that was damaged, and they claimed to hear a metallic voice coming from the robot. They say the voice seemed to say, and I'm quoting here, Woohoo! This is awesome! So our best guess at this point is that there's no monetary gain expected. Sounds pretty random. Have the police taken any action? Well, the police have cordoned off the area, or at least they say they have, but some of the residents here say that the cordons from last week were never actually taken down. Other than that, the police force seems to be waiting for the arrival of one of the city's costume defenders. Well, I'm sure we're all relieved to hear that they're following protocol. What is that that we're hearing, Sally? Difficult to be sure, but it sounds like the song Mr. Theme Music uses whenever Captain Goody appears. Fear not, citizens. Well, that certainly sounds like him. Yes. Yes! I can see him approaching. He's engaging with the robot. It's down! He's knocked the robot to the ground! Well, that was exciting. I'm glad it's over. And now to our report on the poultry... No, I'm sorry, Dirk. But the robot is regaining its footing. Oh. We take you now to Sam Sterling, who's on the other side of the city. Getting back up? You'll regret that, my friend. What was that, Sam? Oh, uh, hello. I'm sorry, I was having a little trouble hearing you. It sounds like you're in a pretty windy location. Almost as if you were right there, flying with Captain Goody. Right. Well, no accounting for acoustics, is there? What exactly can you see? Uh, well, the uh, robot is climbing back to its feet, and Captain Goody is circling it, looking for his next angle of attack. Kelly, are you there? 
Hi, Sally. What's happening? Tell Sam I'm sorry to interrupt his report, but I just saw some sort of energy discharge. If I'm not mistaken, the robot has just erected a force field around itself. Yes. From here, I can see Captain Goody trying to break through the force field, which surrounds the robot like a bubble. But even the mighty kicks from Captain Goody's magical two shoes are not enough to crack the energy field. Thank you, Sally. Sounds pretty wild out there. We'll have more on the giant robot attack right after this. Hi, I'm Greg from Trademark Capes. Did you know that in the city of Metrodelphia, we have three separate heroes, all calling themselves Mr. Awesome? That kind of confusion can ruin your brand name and have people calling for the wrong hero when they really need you. So come on down to Trademark Capes, where we can register your name and the distinctive likeness with the Federal Registry of Superheroes. As a bonus, if you act now, we'll give you a free consultation with our fashion and design teams so you can make your costume and chest emblem really pop. Remember, under federal law, the first person or sentient alien to claim a name gets it. So act now. Call Trademark Capes at 1-800-555-NAME. That's 1-800-555-6263. Don't wait. Call today. Mommy, I can fly like a bird. When Katie first developed her powers, I was scared. I know in my head that superheroes need unregulated access to children with low-level powers to really do their job. But in my heart, all I could think was that sidekicking is dangerous. And that's my little girl. So my husband and I talked about it, and we decided to go to SPA. Are we going to get a massage? <laughs> No, honey. The SPA is the Sidekick Placement Agency of Metrodelphia. For over two years, they've been pairing sidekicks with responsible, practical superheroes who really care and can train my daughter to fight crime the right way. When fighting zombies, you should always wear a bite-proof suit. Safety first! Call SPA today and help everyone breathe just a little easier. Action news on KGDY. Now over to the weather with retired superhero, the Countess of Clouds. And lo, too long have we sweltered in dryness. I do summon forth the elements that there may be rain. Let it fall. Let it fall so much as half an inch, but it shall confine itself to the late part of the day. So bringest thou thine umbrella for the walk to thy car after the workday, and dress not overly warm, for the water that falleth from the sky shall bring great swaths of humidity. So let it be! You heard her, folks. And now back to Sally Simpson with the latest on the giant robot that's moving towards the center of town. Thanks, Kelly. Things are not looking good here. Captain Goody was unable to break through the robot's force field. About a minute ago, the robot fired what appeared to be a metallic net out from the center of its chest. It wrapped around Captain Goody and carried him away. I've lost sight of him. The robot continues on its way. Okay, that was one of the local movie theaters on Lumbar Street. I think if you are planning to see a matinee this afternoon, it's a pretty safe bet you'll need to cancel your plans. Back to you in the studio. All I'm saying is that I spent three months covered in turkey crap, and I don't want to see that go to... Welcome back, listeners. Speaking of plans for today, now over to Chopper Bill to see how this giant robot is affecting traffic. Thanks, Dirk. Traffic is probably not going to be very good right now anywhere on the south side of town. That's where that big robot is. If you're coming into the city, be sure to come in from the north. Your best bet is probably the tunnel dug under the river by Master Mole last year as part of his invasion. City planners have converted that into a two-lane highway, but it should be clear for most of you, and it'll bring you up right by the central bank. Chopper Bill, we're not hearing your helicopter. Is something wrong? Well, yes. The pilot's union has decided that they're not willing to bring the traffic copter up when there's a high chance of super-powered combat. 
We've lost six choppers and four pilots in the last three months, so it's kind of understandable. So how are you seeing the traffic? I'm currently standing on the top of the KGDY building. I have a mostly clear view of the streets below, ex except the south side where the headquarters of Danger Squad Alpha has been set up. I can't really see past that at all. Don't we have some traffic satellites you could use? Afraid not, Dirk. One of the Mr. Awesomes flew into space last week and used the satellites as projectiles to destroy the giant alligators in the river. I've asked one of our interns for a pair of binoculars, but so far... Okay, let's head back to Sam Sterling to see if he has any updates on Captain Goody's fight with the giant robot. Must break free. Must break free! Sam, Sam, are you there? Yes! Yes, sorry, um, hadn't realized my mic was still on. It sounds like you're right there next to Captain Goody. Yes! Yes, he's right here. Uh, he's attempting to break out from the net that has ensnared him, but so far, it's a little harder than one might suspect. Can you talk to him for us? He, he looks a little busy just now, Kelly. Well, just until he escapes the net, of course. You want me to interview Captain Goody? Goody? Is there any reason that can't happen? No, no, of course not. Th Excuse me, Captain. Are you all right? Yes, fine. Thank you for asking. I should be free in just a few moments. Should we call one of the other superheroes to fight this robot? Yeah. Uh, would you like us to call another superhero for help? Whoa. Thank you. Uh, I think I can handle this. Not sure who else to call, really. Um, maybe short out Simon could shut down the robot, but, but I understand he's in China this week. Does he have a plan to defeat the robot? Do you know how you'll stop this robot? I have an idea, but I prefer not to discuss it. No sense telegraphing my plans. Whoever's controlling that robot might be listening, you know. While he's there, can you ask him about our own Sally Simpson? We've seen pictures of him out and about with both her and Lady Light Show recently. Is there friction there? Well, we haven't said anything about being exclusive. You know, this probably isn't the time. Sam, I, I didn't even hear you ask him that. There's no need for Sam to ask. My goody hearing is very acute. Oh, that's me out of the net. Gotta go! Thanks, Sam. Sally, are you able to see anything? Not yet, Dirk. Since we're waiting, did you want to comment on the photographs of Captain Goody and Lady Light Show? She... he and I... I'm sure she's a very nice person. I never actually had a chance to meet... Ah, oh, there he is! Captain Goody is coming straight toward the robot, but the force field is still... Wait, he's changing course. He's taking a nosedive! He's burrowed under the earth, and yes, I can see him again. He has come up from underneath the robot and is lifting it, force field and all. Is he going to throw it into the sun? He does throw a lot of robots into the sun. He does appear to be throwing it into the sun. Yes. And... There it goes! The giant robot has left Earth's orbit, and the day is once again saved. No need to fear, citizens! Away! Back to you, Dirk. Thank you, Sally. We've just gotten some news out of Washington that Captain Shenanigans has appeared in the sky, fighting giant bees while apparently covered in honey. It sounds like he's run into another sinister death trap. Oh, that Captain Shenanigans. Be sure to join us next news hour when we'll have even more on the situation in Washington. And possibly a hard-hitting expose on the poultry industry. I'm Kelly Sunbeam. And I'm Dirk Hardthrottle. Thanks for listening to KGDY, and remember... If you're not wearing tights, stay, stay out, out of, of the, the fight. fight! Stay tuned for more, Metrodelphia!
You have been listening to KGDY, Episode 1, The Studio Version. This program was written and directed by Dan Wenzel and produced by Seat of Our Pants Players. Brianna Kuby was Kelly Sunbeam and SPA Spokeswoman. Rick Tennant was Dirk Hardthrum. Andrew Dell was Chopper Bill and Greg from Trademark Games. Liz Music was The Countess of Clouds and Little Katie. Jill Wenzel was Sally Simpson. And Captain Goody and his alter ego were Dan Wenzel. Sound effects provided by www.freesfx.co.uk. Music today included Take a Chance by Kevin McLeod, News Theme by Kevin McLeod, and Daytime TV Theme by Kevin McLeod. Stay tuned for more, citizens.